Welcome, well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you. So today, we would love to hear your comments and any of your questions. You're watching Monday, it's live. Give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-271. 2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. Well, Monday, you know we always put a question out there. And this is the question What are some essentials for good and caring mm -hmm. communication in marriage? Such an important matter and reality. We want to hear from you. We want you to call us, be a part of this show. What are the practical things that you do? in your marriage, possibly even in your family or with others, to be an effective communicator, but also a caring communicator. So practical, but also caring communication. Well, we want to bring you all up to speed with what's going on with the Pintos. My brother, Scott, and his lovely wife, Kathy Spatz, they're married 41 years. They came down for 10 days to visit us from New Jersey, right? And they're still with us. And because they wanted to see our four grandsons and our one granddaughter that's playing softball and our grandsons that are playing football. So they wanted to come and Let's be in person, yeah. right? And so we're having a wonderful visit with them. And they came to see Isabella play. Now, Isabella is our oldest grandchild. Softball And playing. she plays yeah. softball for the University of West Georgia. And so Saturday, we were doing football. We were doing softball. And they also got to see Isaiah. Isaiah. He's a quarterback. His mm -hmm. brother's a quarterback as well. And Isaiah was throwing like touchdown passes, and yeah. I caught him at halftime, and I said, Isaiah, he was with his team, I said, just let me take a picture of you. But uh, so Scott and Kathy got to see him. And um, so Isabella, they've seen him. Who else did we see? We saw oh, Jude we saw on Nathan. Wednesday, Nathan. and then we saw Nathan. Our old, well, one of our oldest grandchildren. Grands, he, Nathan's he, our oldest grandson. Yeah, he's yeah. A, and he's, he's a senior, and our whole family gathered around. It was homecoming, and, mm -hmm. and his team won that day, and he's getting ready to go off to college on a scholarship to play football. But, you know, Joy, the, we want to thank Scott and Kathy's family, mm -hmm. you know, the Spats family back home, the O'Donnells. That's Kathy's maiden name. Mm -hmm. Um, so thanks to all of the children there, all of the grandchildren that let Big Daddy, they call him Big Daddy. They call him Big Daddy. And, and their grandmother go. And of course, uh, Kathy's mom lives yes. there at the house as well, Joan. Mm -hmm. So we want to give a shout out to Joan. Pisano? Yes. Uh, is, is her maiden name Italian. Mm -hmm. Kathy can cook. Kathy can cook. Kathy O'Donnell Pisano can mm -hmm. really cook. And she was frying so, up some eggplant, eggplant last night. Yep, but, it you was know, We're delicious. speaking about communication mm -hmm. today, so we want to hear from you. But you know, your brother and your sister-in-law, they communicate with our kids, mm -hmm. our grandkids, you know, through social media, other ways, they had a phone conversation. But they said, we want to come down and we want to see them. Yeah. We want to touch them. Mm -hmm. We want to hold them. We want them to see us. Mm -hmm. And that, that is such a beautiful thing. So maybe you can do that for your family members. Maybe we need to trip back up to New Jersey to see their four kids and nine mm -hmm. grandkids mm -hmm. and, and Grandma Joan and, and just love on them. But communication is not just about words. Words only communicates about 7% of the whole communication. Your facial expression, your manner, your the body that language, you give, the tone that you speak in. And just to say, though, that your brother and sister, what a blessing to say, we want to come down physically. Mm -hmm. We really want to communicate all the way with them. We want to hold them. We want to touch them. What a great gift they're giving to us, challenges us to do the same thing. So what are some essentials for good and caring communication in marriage? Not just the practical things and how you do it, being responsible for the way you speak and receiving it, but servanthood, wanting to serve the one that you're trying to communicate with as Christ served the bride his church and lay down his life. 1-800-221-9460. There's plenty more to come. We'll be right back. We want to hear from you. Please don't go away.
remember, today we're taking your questions on our show. So if you're watching, it's Monday and we are live. Please give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can always reach us at 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So the question is this. What are some essentials for good and caring communication in marriage? The most, probably the most important relationship when you're married in your life is to really, really tweak and know your communicating skills of your spouse. We're married 44 Four years. years. <laughs> And we've learned a lot. We've made a lot of mistakes, how we listen and how we don't listen, um, our body language, things that are offensive, yeah. ways that is helpful for your spouse to listen to you, and ways that's not helpful for your spouse to listen to we you. We have Michael and Alicia Hernan, former guests of ours and no strangers to EW10, founders of the Messy Family Project. Go to messyfamilyproject.org. Hernans, are you there? Yes. Yes, we are. We are here. Well, it's great to have you all back. Thank, thanks for the great work that you're doing. You seem to be all over the place and, and, and teaching <laughs> and, and doing various projects. But we wanted to have you on for your thoughts about a good communication and caring communication. Your thoughts. Well, I have to say, when I was first married, I thought the point of our communication or you know discussions, if you will, was to prove my point that I was right. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what I originally thought, <laughs> and I really have to learn that the point of communication is actually unity, unity with your spouse, and there's several ways in which it's, a, there's several different techniques you can use to achieve that unity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one of the things we say a lot is that it's better to be wrong together than right alone. Now, we're not mm -hmm. talking about morality here. <laughs> Yeah, but so many times we think we're we have to find the perfect way, whether it be where we're traveling, what directions, or whether it be how we're raising our kids. We have to have the perfect way, yeah. so we'll argue our yeah. point as if it's the only way to survive. Yes. Yeah, and I think it's good for us to realize that we have to do things together, right? And that right. that unity is what makes us strong as parents. Yes. Well, you should know because you have ten children and you have three plus grandchildren, so I'm sure you had some lovely conversations all along the way. Yeah, and one of the things that, um, just to kind of another essentials, yes. and this may sound uh, um, superlative because we're talking about communication, is actually making the time to communicate. Yes. Be we get so busy, right? And uh, how many times do we stop and say, we really need to, to, to invest in our relationship mm -hmm. and communicate and uh, take time away from the kids and everything else that's going on just to have a meaningful conversation with our spouse because that's when problems come up when we don't communicate. Yes. And then those communications end up with arguments instead mm -hmm. of having some good times where we're developing our, our skill. Yeah, and sometimes we even when we would go out, we would have to make rules for ourselves about what we were allowed to talk about, you know, especially now doing this ministry together, we can kind of default and just automatically just start talking about like business kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But even like even before the ministry, we could always default and just talk about budgets and plans, and, and sometimes you have to make a rule to say, no, we're, we're not going to talk about, or even we're not going to talk about the kids right now. Let's talk about us. Let's mm -hmm. talk about how we're doing. Or let's talk about events of the day or politics or big ideas or the kind of conversations that you had maybe when you were engaged or when you were dating. Like there's so much more communication that has to happen rather yeah. than just logistics, which is what a lot of couples can get caught up into. And you two all encourage a date night, right? And so yes. everything is intentional. If you want to have good communication in marriage, it doesn't just happen. You have to be intentional about making that happen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is so true. What, what are the, every older couple, we always ask advice. Of, so what's the secret sauce? What, what have you done in your marriage? You know, those who've been married, you know, 50 years, 60 years. And almost invariably, every couple says date nights. Regularly yeah. making time to go out with each other and pursuing your spouse. And a lot of times when we talk to young couples, they, you know, our um, excuse is usually, oh, we can't, we don't want to leave the kids or we don't have a babysitter or whatever. And you, it, I just want to emphasize to those couples who are listening, date nights are not a luxury. 
they are not an optional thing that you do once your marriage is figured out and your life is perfect. They are essential. Mm, they are yes. essential. And you have to make the time to do it. Go ask your priest to get you in contact with another great family in your parish who maybe has someone who can come over and watch the kids if they're yeah. asleep. You can mm-hmm. put your children down and then leave the house. Or maybe you put the kids down early and then you have time where you're alone together and you make your own little date night in your living room or something mm-hmm. like that. But you have to carve out that time to be together. It is so absolutely essential for you, for the health of your children, really, mm-hmm. that yeah. you have a strong, committed time to work on your relationship. Because what is the most important thing you can give to your kids? You can give your kids a strong marriage. That yep. is the way that you're going to be an amazing parent is to be a really, truly excellent spouse and love your spouse. Uh, share with us just briefly, um, a lot of us that do teaching on life, marriage, and the family haven't been going out as much because of COVID. What are you doing in terms of social media or ways that people can gather together? Yeah, as, as a community, one of the things we try to do is uh, virtual date nights that we've been trying to do for couples, and we have one actually come up next uh, next week with uh, yes, Jeff thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we think these virtual date nights are a fun idea. So if you're, if you're either in lockdown or you want to stay, have a, a, a date night in, we are set for you for October 28th. We have a date night with Jeff and Emily Cavins on the Bible and the family. Mm-hmm. It'll be a great conversation, but we'll also have conversations that they can continue after the date night. Because maybe sometimes you're like, what are we going to talk about? Well, hey, mm-hmm. we've got a topic already set for you and a great conversation for you and your spouse mm-hmm. and everything free uh, provided. You can just go and RSVP on our website. And you know, family. Go, at- go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go right ahead. I was just going to say one thing that we've done too to try to um, keep us talking about like relational ideas is, you know, like going to a talk or something, you know, like the virtual date night that, that we're hosting ourselves or going to some other kind of lecture to give your food for thought. But we've also bought little like conversation starter cards mm-hmm. that probably people who are just dating use, but we found them actually really fun. We've been mm-hmm. married for 27 years and they ask you questions like, what was a typical day for you growing up? And what was the greatest thing your father taught you? And, you know, like what is one thing that you would never want to do, but you know you should do? Or, you know, just really fun things that you can kind of just go deeper. You know, there's always more to know about your spouse. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's something that's a very simple, no pay thing, (laughs) you know, that you can do is to just have those really fun conversations and kind of get the juices flowing again. Michael and Alicia, thank you so very much. May God bless you, your precious family, and MessyFamilyProject.org. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. So many good ideas. They they always have great ideas. I love what they were sharing about how you have to be intentional about the date night, you know. And I can remember when early on in our marriage, you were in seminary, you, in our, your other life, you were an Episcopal priest and you were at seminary. And I would be scheduled a date night, uh, the time for your wife. So it would be wife time. I worked 12 hours a day. I would come home and on Jim's little schedule, it would be wife time. So uh, you would get to it talk to me. It sounds cold, but you got to pencil no, it in. No, but it's true because it's just kind of like, then we become like two ships passing in the night and we all get so busy. But it is, it's yeah. intentional just to say, hey, how was your day? There's, yeah. there's little talk that you do and then hopefully you can go to another level of conversation until a deep level of conversation when you say you know what let's hold that conversation till we go out on that date next week because we really need to discuss this so what are some essentials for good and caring communication good communication we hear some of the practical things you know being responsible for how you're communicating Mm -hmm. don't leave little bits and pieces out be clear be sure that your words are matching your facial expressions and being integrated, the different cues that you give off. But then caring, mm-hmm. caring. And so they sh- shared about our being united together is even more important than right and wrong. You know, so, so that when you're communicating, especially with your mate, it, it's like, you know, be at one with one another lest your prayers be hindered, the Word of God says. Mm-hmm. If I'm not one with you, then my, I don't have a prayer. Right. Now, we've gone to bed over the years, not lately, but sometimes we, would, we disagreed about something. It went right. on and on maybe throughout the day, into the night, 
and, and we look at each other, and I usually say to you, hey, listen, we're not going to come out in the same place. I said, but I want you to know, you know, our love for each other is more important than what this is about, and I would like to go to sleep. <laughs> you know, so can I go to sleep? And you peace? normally go to sleep in a second. I love like you that. more than this. <laughs> right. You know, so so we just need to know that, mm -hmm. and that's that's the caring part. Right. That's the part. Our relationship, our fidelity to one another. We're not always going to come out in the same place, even though I'm usually right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you're right. But, but, you know, I'm united with you. There's nothing right. more important th th that we're discussing, finances or the kids or the job or whatever it is, than my love for you. I want to sleep now. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't go to yeah. bed, you know, angry. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you still might be a little frustrated, but you're saying our love is paramount. And that's yeah. what we have here. Well, somebody wrote said, we just celebrated our 46th wedding anniversary on October 3rd. We promised never to go to bed mad at each other. So we haven't slept since last Sunday. <laughs> and I yeah. thought that was really cute. And but just kidding. But truthfully, love is not 50 50. It's not 90 10. You always have to be ready to be the one giving the 90. And we say, when both spouses truly give themselves for each other, beautiful things happen in marriage. And this is on Ray, yeah, from Ray on, on Ray. Facebook. But the deal is this, it's not 50-50, it's 100% everybody is all in. We're all in. We're totally committed. You have everything. And you, know, and, we, and you learn in marriage. And you know what? Sometimes it gets tough. And sometimes in marriage, you know what, maybe you need counseling. Sometimes you say, you know what, we can't get through this bump in the road. This is a really bad season. It seems to be lasting and we can't get through it. And well, maybe you need to go to your priest or a counselor and have someone guide you through that storm. Because the end game is you wanna be reunited back with your spouse. And it may be awful things in marriage. Sometimes marriages experience infidelity or there's alcoholism, or there's drug abuse, and it can get messy in a minute in a marriage. But, but you have to be committed and say, as for me and you, we will used to tell our children, divorce is not an option. Mommy and daddy are not getting a divorce. And they would just kind of look at you, because you know sometimes little children, they see you fight, they get, you get upset, and they think, oh, mommy and daddy are gonna get a divorce. And we would really sec make them secure that we were gonna figure this out, no matter how long it took, to make it work. Well, there's practical <laughs> things, work. there's real roadblocks, you know, but just being a part of a marriage and family fellowship, mm -hmm. you just ask your parish, see what's there to be together, get around some older couples, or maybe you're the older couple, and learn from one another. Um, but again, the caring part, you know, it, it, it's like if we would just understand that when we touch one another or we share with one another, we're touching Jesus Christ. And for me, when we first got married, I thought I could just relate to you directly. Mm -hmm. But the Lord showed me I'm married to her. You don't get to relate to her directly. She's my bride. You're a stand-in because she's gonna be my bride in all eternity. And you're gonna be my bride, so to speak. And that's really important. So it's not only the practical things and how you do them, or big blocks. It's like, you look at Jesus on the cross, a crucifix of Jesus Christ, that's how he loves his bride. Mm -hmm. Is that how I enter into conversations? And that's why you gotta make time. So I say, you know, I really want you to know what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling you know, in this. Peak communication, this is what I think, this is what I feel. And somebody's clarifying that for you. You know, when, when you're the receiver of the message, you really got to be hearing, mm -hmm. not just listening and doing self-talk, how you're going to answer. And that's a real temptation for me. I got to say, what are you saying? Did I get it all? I have to clarify. What you, it's an act of love. You know, right. to listen and to really hear is love. And I think one of the helpful things that you say to me is, or, and you do this in conversation, you'll say, did I hear you say... Yeah. Is this what you said? And I'm thinking, I didn't say that. I, and I didn't mean that. But you can say it. And so, it, but that always, it kind of like yeah. uh, lessens the, the blow and the dial. Yeah, it's just kind of like, he, he's really listening. The other I, thing that we've learned again is that the death to a conversation is you always do this. Mm -hmm. You're always going to do this. You always say this. And so once you do that, the other person's saying, I don't always do that. I may mm -hmm. do that. But, and then it's kind of like, if you, if you think that's where it is, then I, have not, I, I can't say anything because there's no room. You don't want to back somebody into a corner. And if you've done that, then you've got to say, you know, I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry because I'm just trying to win the argument. Mm -hmm. That was another thing I had to learn because when we first got married, I was trying to win arguments. And you said, are you trying to win this? 
And I said, yeah, because that's what we do in my family that I was raised in. We argue and we debate things. And you said, I just want to know God's will for us about this area, where we're going to live, our finances, our kids, discipline, whatever. So that's all I want. I don't want to win the argument. And that was very helpful. Yeah, and, and sometimes we need to say to our spouse, hey, I'm your greatest cheerleader. Like, I'm so for you, and I want this to be solved, too. I just don't have the answer right now. Amen. So so God bless you. Thanks for your participation. May God bless you, your communication as a married couple or you know, with your family, with other people. You know, let's be somebody that takes responsibility for what they say and to be good listeners that really hear before we respond. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, we're going to go to Rome to check in with beautiful Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what's the latest news from Rome? Well, greetings, Jim and Joy. Sunday was a very big day for the Universal Church, in case people don't know it, because in the Diocese of Rome, whose bishop is the Pope and dioceses throughout the world, all began the diocesan phase of the two-year-long Synod on Synodality that will end in Rome in October 2023. Now that phase will end in April of next year to be followed by a continental phase from September 2022 to March 2023. And you know, Catholics everywhere at all levels of the church are expected to participate in some way in this process that the church hopes will be truly synodal in listening, discernment, and participation. The world's bishops were invited in May of this year to appoint a contact person or team to lead the head listening phase and also to act as liaison between the diocese and the parishes and between the diocese and the local, uh, and the local Episcopal Conference. Now, back here in Rome for a minute, Sunday in St. Peter's, was a very poignant moment for one man. Monsignor Guido Marini, who has been the Papal Master of Liturgical Ceremonies since 2007. In August, the Pope named him the Bishop of Tortona, Italy, and on Sunday, he ordained him a bishop under the direction of a new Master of Ceremonies. And he also ordained another bishop on Sunday, and that was Andres Gabriel Ferrada Moreira. He's a Chilean priest whom the Pope named in September as Secretary of the Congregation for Bishops, where he had worked since 2018, and he now has the rank of Archbishop. And then finally, another big story in the Vatican this week. This was the announcement that Pope Francis has authorized the Congregation for Saints to promulgate a decree concerning a miracle attributed to the intercession of his predecessor, and that is to say, Venerable Servant of God, Pope John Paul I. Now, born Albino Luciani in northern Italy, Luciani was known as the Smiling Pope. But he died in the Apostolic Palace in Rome on September 28, 1978, after only 33 days of papacy. Anyway, he's on the road to canonization, and that's good news. Time's up here. Back to you. Joan, thanks so much for that update and report. And she reminds us about the Synod. And right now we're in that process, as she said, of seeking God, communication, listening before we speak. Because the Synod's about what we're supposed to be hearing. And so, again, those are the lessons that we've been trying to go over today. Let us seek the Lord. Let us listen to him. And he's always ready to listen to you. Whether you're married or not, you're single, you're widowed, you're sick, you're ill, you're in prison. God loves to hear from you. It's, it's a union with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And may we be good listeners that people come our way. May we not self-talk all the time. It's such a gift of love just to listen and hear and give people some feedback and, and let them know that they matter. They do. Mm -hmm. But when we listen to people and we hear their hearts, what a blessing it is. So let's be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger, as St. James says. You're an important part of this EWTN family. You're never alone. 
you're always at home with Jim and with Joy. God bless you and all of your loved ones. Bye now.